Warning, this episode contains strong language or mature themes. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to this podcast is Uncalled For. What's uncalled for? What are we doing with you? You met a girl, didn't you? I was like, oh, how did you know? He's like, oh, because it always happens. It always happens. It's the only stupid reason that you would ever drop the OTC because of a stupid girl. And then look, thank you, Black Phone. Oh, was, that's going to be great for the football charts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can um, think of a hundred right off the top of my head. Is a genre. So it just uh, a lot happens behind the scenes that people don't know about. Like it, it's hard for the average voter to understand how much of what they think is their democracy is decided by faceless people uh, to them. You know, you and I know who's making these decisions. There you go. This, these are the kind of discussions we we have. Fortunately, we're both fairly level-headed people. Again, we're looking at each other in the eye. We're not going to say anything derogatory to the other person. And, of course, neither of us is drunk. Take me to gay spot with you. It's yeah. a bit of a slap in the face and insults. And... But you didn't even give a chance for a wild card spot. And the <laughs> yeah. look on Mike's face. They love big boys like you. <laughs> Kind of, what is that character from Guardians of the Galaxy who takes everything literally? <laughs> the, the people are out there like they could have taken it literally. Yeah, we're crazy people and we love what we do. And so we just keep creating regardless of how hard it can be sometimes. Thank you. And thank you for letting me, having me on your podcast. Oh, absolutely. And remember, uh-huh. you're you. <laughs> that is uncalled for, Michael. And now, your host for this podcast, Mike Chernefsky. I have a lot more on this tape. Here. Listen to this. Well, so the name of this podcast is Stuff Uncalled For? This podcast is Uncalled For. Okay, all right. Well, and all y'all, yeah. subscribe, and like, and comment, and subscribe. Yeah. I said it. Fuji. Welcome to the podcast. It's going to be a thoughts episode, and in the spirit of this particular thoughts episode, I'm going to open with a quote from, uh, he wasn't Senator at the time he said this, but Senator Al Franken. Unless you are desperately in need of a new lever, please turn off your cell phones. Um, he said that at, as a, uh, way to start his uh, speech at the 2004 as I 2004 2005 one of the two years uh, the National Conference for Media Reform in St. Louis which I attended and uh, attended specifically to hear uh, Al Franken uh, speak and this thing and uh, he talked about the difference between what he was doing on Air America Radio and what uh, Rush Limbaugh was doing um, and uh, it and the speech boiled down t- to this and again quoting Franken we get our statistics from the Borough of Labor statistics Rush Limbaugh gets his statistics from the borough of Russia's butt. And that is still very much the case uh, today. And so, yes, we're going to talk about uh, media bias or lack thereof in American media. And I say this as someone who's been active both in politics and has worked in media. Uh, I consider myself a 
progressive Bernie wing. Uh, almost socialist, uh, but the word socialist has so much stigma to it that uh, progressive is how I uh, identify. Uh, I am a registered Democrat. Uh, despite what uh, certain centrist people would have you believe, uh, I've been a registered Democrat since I turned 18 and had been quite active with the party from two, some, from about 2004 to 2016, officially stepping down as a precinct person in 2017. Because I've had it with these uh, uh, centrists who might as well just call themselves Republicans for all I care. Um, uh, as for the media side of things, well, you're listening to this podcast, and that is a form of media. But in terms of uh, actually working with uh, legacy media, if you will, I did intern and later did volunteer and paid work for our uh, PBS station, KCPT, Kansas City PBS, I guess they call themselves now. And also a little work work for uh, C-SPAN with a local uh, TV crew. Uh, but most of that wound up on book TV. So. And uh, I got to tell you, they're, they're really, uh, even though PBS is as close to the BBC as you'll find here in the States, it really isn't all that biased and uh, very much focused on the... Uh, local issues. In fact, the very first time I met Nick Haynes, he said, we only focus on local stuff at this station. Um, so, and I, as far as the uh, political bias is concerned, uh, Nick, BBC trained journalist, and is an actual journalist. He keeps his personal politics out of his journalism to his credit. And I'm witness to an incident during my internship where uh, the man I maintain was the worst governor in Kansas history. I uh, showed up to do a f full session of Kansas City Weekend Review and this is when I had my camera issues and everything. And I felt Nick did a good job of holding this guy to account this Christo fascist to account. And yes, I think it is fair to characterize Ed Brownback as such. All right. Uh, held him to account. And then after the interview, before we uh, all went to uh, lunch and then come back for the other part, the, uh, oh, you're the one part of the story. Uh, I saw the governor's people giving Nick the business, um, which I would learn later. Learn they basically said, "Yeah, we're not coming back because we don't like the way that you uh, do journalism." Um, again, Nick does a good job of keeping his politics out of journalism, but that's good journalism. All right. That is something you constantly hear from the right wing in America. For our international listen, listeners out there, you constantly hear, oh, the media is liberally biased, uh, which which is uh, bullshit. Uh, again, I highly uh, recommend uh, some of Al Franken's work, uh, especially uh, this is the book that got me into uh, media bias. Lies and the lying liars who tell them. A fair and balanced look at the right. And, and uh, he stated himself, American mainstream media does not have a liberal bias. Uh, again, I worked with PBS as, as left-leaning as socialist a news outlet as it gets in the States than uh, NPR. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't feel like uh, they were intentionally leaning everything 
towards the uh, left. In fact, there are certain individuals at that station that do lean to the right. But they, again, they do a good job of keeping their personal politics uh, out of it. Just get in there and do a job. Right? And, uh, and uh, here, here's the thing, uh, too, and something that people just don't quite understand about American media is that outside of PBS and NPR, all of our media is owned and operated by giant corporations. All right. As of 2022, the largest media conglomerates in terms of revenue are Comcast. Comcast owns all things NBC, including MSNBC, which uh, as much as as much as I uh, like it and everything, uh, what on the people on the right would say, of course you'd like it because because you're a lefty. Uh, they do a, they do a pretty good job of uh, accurately reporting on the news. Uh, yeah, they do have a slight uh, democratic bias, and that's okay. That's okay. Uh, the Walt Disney Corp Company, uh, ABC, ESPN, those are all, those are both under Disney. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, that's CNN. And uh, they've, uh, CNN has always been, you know, fairly neutral in their coverage, but yeah, lately, uh, October 2022, when I'm recording this, uh, they've Creep, been steadily creeping to uh, the right because of corporates um, corporate pressure uh, Paramount Global CBS and fairly straight down the middle uh, very well very well respected and Everything, but none of those really lean towards the left, and they're certainly not uh, as liberally biased as people would have you uh, believe. And I think the reason people think that is, uh, well, the right has done some pretty despicable things, and they are, and the media have done a good job holding them to account. That being said, there is a whole metaverse of right-wing uh, media out there. Uh, in terms of TV, the obvious example of this is Fox News. Uh, anything News Corp owned by anything owned by Rupert Murdoch, you know it's going to have a right-wing bias to it um, uh, talk radio for the most part is uh, with a couple of exceptions like Air America Radio back in the day uh, talk radio is heavily conservatively biased again uh, we go to the now deceased Rush Limbaugh as an example of that, he set the uh, trend for uh, angry right-wing talk. And a lot of people, unfortunately, buy this bullshit. Uh, and uh, it has certainly shown its ugly head since then. You had the... You had a uh, sense... Since the eighties, you know, I and I, I do think a lot of this uh, can be traced to, to the eighties, starting with Reagan, but really came to for uh, in the uh, early nineties when uh, Clinton took office, and then you had uh, Newt Gingrich and his contract on America. 
he managed to uh, impeach Clinton for uh, basically lying about bow jobs. That's not an impeachable offense, Newt. And other despicable scumbags um, out there on the right. Uh, if, in fact, going back to what I said about registering as the Democrats at age 18, that was 1996. Clinton was up for re-election against Bob Dope. That should tell you how far to, how much of a Democrat and how far to the left I am. That even I would consider Bob Dole too far, too extreme uh, to the right even then. So if you want to question my Democratic bona fides, keep that in mind. All right. Uh, let's see. We had Newt's. Then we. Followed up with uh, George W. Bush, uh, whom uh, I will give Donnie some credit. He made Bush somewhat palatable in the eyes of a lot of people. But let's not forget that Bush did lie us into 20 years of war. Um, so, uh, so we can't exactly say that. He was a uh, perfect saint. He certainly was not. Uh, then Obama, first African-American president in uh, American history. He takes office and immediately you hear from the right. Well, this guy's a socialist. He was not. He was actually quite modern. This guy's a racist. Uh, this guy, this, that, and the other. They're basically blaming him for everything. Oh, they're going to turn... America into the Soviet Union. Bullshit. Bullshit. Uh, and uh, next thing you know, you hear, hear about these uh, teabaggers. And I'm not the one that came up with the name. All right. They came up with it themselves. Teabaggers. And then uh, that leads to... Uh, where we are today with the MAGA crowd and Donnie. Uh, and we're talking about despicable behavior from the right. We're talking a guy who was impeached twice, did a uh, terrible job on the world stage, uh, pretty much pissed off all of our allies, counts out to Russia, uh, did nothing to curb a uh, global pandemic and uh, cast himself as a, the new messiah uh, by a group of people who want the world to end. Uh, all right, uh, let, let's be absolutely clear about that. I'm getting on a bit of a tangent, but uh, that is exactly why you hear from the right, oh, let's support uh, Israel and Everything is they want the world to end. All right. They only support Israel because of um, something that was written in the book of Revelation about how the world's supposed to end and everything. And that can only happen if the state of Israel exists according to the Bible. Um, Quite frankly, they don't do a very good job of reading the Bible because they demonize uh, anything to the left of Attila the Hun as, oh, oh, uh, evil socialism and everything. Do these jackasses uh, know that uh, Jesus himself would be classed a socialist? All right. So, um, so, yeah. Yeah, if you want to invoke Christ, uh, do a better job at uh, explaining what his message actually was, you fucking fascists. Uh, anyway, anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, but you, you see a pattern. You see a pattern here. If it's a, a Democrat, moderate, or prog we haven't had many progressive presidents, I'm sorry to say. Uh, 
but if it, if there's a D next to a president's name, they are going to be uh, demonized for God knows why. And most of it's uh, unfairly. And I'm not saying that they've been perfect, but they're being demonized and even impeached for bullshit reasons. Uh, and uh, that that shows in right-wing media. Whereas if a Republican is in, in office, uh, it's nothing but kissing their ass while this guy does nothing or, or in reality, in making the situation worse for American people. Okay. Again, going back to Reagan, uh, Carter uh, famously puts uh, solar panels on the White House. We're talking the late 70s here, here, folks. Then Reagan comes into power, the solar panels are down. So that's, I should tell you, um, even back in the 70s and 80s, what's the right wing uh, attitude towards uh, green energy has been. Uh, so, so I do not think that the right can govern all that well. And uh, I think it's laughable that they would claim, oh, media, liberal media bias. Uh, how is that even possible when most of the media is corporately owned and corporations have a conservative bias they have a profit motive all right all right they're trying to earn as much profit as possible now tell me what exactly about earning profit is even remotely to the left all right and uh happy to say that uh welcome to the uh, podcasting community, Keith Olbermann. Uh, Keith, of course, you guys start in uh, sports, most famously ESPN and Sports Center. The first time I heard about him was actually those Boston Market commercials in the late nineties, where we had those uh, commercials with the uh, models. Uh, there's a burning from within, and then Olbermann shows up. Well, here's a tip: eat something. And then, uh, and then about the middle part of the uh, middle part of the uh, aughts, uh, he had a, a show on MSNBC, uh, Countdown, during which he would regularly hold uh, the rights to accounts, often naming them the worst persons in the world. And his number one target was a right-wing uh, journalist, if you will, by the name of Bill O'Reilly, who uh, talks uh, family values and everything, but uh, we find out he's a uh, bit of a sick weirdo. Uh, case in point uh, is a sexual harassment of his producer, for which he was sued, and we learned of of the uh, lower details from the uh, suit where he talked about uh, having shower sex with her while uh, rubbing her with a loofah mitts which somehow morphed into the falafel thing uh, to this day uh, I can't uh, think about falafels and not think about uh, that particular situation and there's the fact he wrote a very bad murder mystery. It's called Those Who Trespass. And it contains uh, this line. Drowning is not an option. Unless, of course, you want me to perform a natural act to you right here in this shower. <laughs> uh, happy to see that uh, Keith uh, returned to Countdown as a podcast in 
recent months, I do highly suggest checking that out. In fact, I'll put it on the on my uh, podcast list up there with the well and and uh, all that. And uh, it and uh, it really um, it really does well as a uh, podcast. No question. <laughs> it's just great to uh, hear those. Uh, we're the worst persons in the world. Billing out uh, once again. So if there, so if there is a left version of uh, Fox News and Rush Limbaugh, it it probably would be Keith. Um, although he, unlike the other people, he actually uh, knows what the hell he's talking about. He, he studied uh, to be a journalist and practices what he preaches, although I will disagree with him on a few things. I think he was one of the people who bought Stan's uh, bullshit about St. Louis not being an NFL town. But, but uh, still, major credits, Keith Holman. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this particular thoughts episode. Remember, next time you're uh, watching the news and you hear someone on the right saying, oh, the news is liberally biased, call them out on it, as I certainly will. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. This podcast is uncalled for as hosted. Produced and edited by Mike Chernefsky. Opening music is I Thought You Were Cool by Holy Easna CC0, licensed under a Creative Commons 01.0 Universal License. The outro music for this episode is Beethoven, Symphony No. 9, Second Movement by Felix Weingartner, licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 3.0 United States License. Please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting platform, like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash uncalledforpodcast. And check out our blog with show notes at uncalledfor.home.blog. If you are in the United States or Canada, you can call us at 816-832-5160. Leave your message or question for us, and if we like it, we will play it on the podcast. Please support the podcast and purchase our exclusive Uncalled For merchandise. T-shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, stickers, and so much more. Go to www.cafepress.com slash uncalledforpod. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time.